that that group, that core group of three wives and, and the husband, Benjamin, that of the three wives in 2020, Chloe had been with Benjamin the longest. Of the three wives, she was the, the longest surviving wife of that group. And then after her came Jessica, who had been in the group for about two years. Chloe had been with him for about three years. And then Sarah came last. She had been with him for less than a year. But they all lived together as a family. Um, Chloe had a baby, Anna, with Benjamin. Um, and so it was Benjamin, the three wives, and the baby. You'll also hear the evidence that there was another individual that spent a lot of time with them, traveled with them, participated in a lot of their same belief systems. His name is Jason Spillers. You'll see him in this case and, and hear evidence from him as well. So uh, the belief system. What you will hear is that they had very sort of radical views. They were strict vegans. They only drank purified water. They um, did not believe in any type of drugs or alcohol, no modern medicine. Hannah never had a birth certificate or went to the doctor. Um, you'll hear that they participated in alternative healing practices like drinking their own urine, sensory deprivation, meditation, um, that they did not believe in modern medicine. You will hear that they collectively as a group engaged in this sort of thought process that they had a, a higher consciousness than the rest of the world. That they were called upon to challenge the realities um, of sort of the traditional worldview. And that was something that they all leaned into and felt pride in. And it was collective as the group. They were all like-minded in that way. Now, you're also going to hear that they were pretty nomadic, that they didn't have strong roots anywhere, that they traveled around a lot, that they bounced from place to place, spent time in different locations. Um, none of them were from Cherokee County. It was a sheer coincidence that this act happened in our jurisdiction, and I'll get into that. Um, on December the 8th of 2020, they were traveling from North Carolina down to Florida. Benjamin, the husband, had previously lived in a residence at 215 Mountain Vista Boulevard in Canton, Georgia, with a man by the name of Gerald Ablin. Gerald Ablin still lived in that residence on December the 8th of 2020, and so in their travels, Benjamin, Jason Spillers, and three wives, Sarah, Jessica, Chloe, and the baby, Hannah, were all caravanning from North Carolina down to Florida in four different vehicles, a U-Haul and three cars, and they were planning to move down to Florida, and they stopped at Jerry Ablin's house in Canton, Georgia, three miles from this courthouse, because Benjamin had stuff in Jerry's basement. And so the plan was for Jason and Benjamin to load up the stuff that was in Jerry's basement into the U-Haul and to get back on the road and head to Florida. What happened was when they got there, two of the wives, Sarah and Jessica, went to one of the upstairs bedrooms to take a nap. And Hannah and Chloe went to another upstairs bedroom to take a nap. Gerald Ablin, the homeowner, was worked from home. He's a software engineer. So he was on a Zoom call working. Um, and the women and the baby went to the room so they didn't disturb him. And Jason, Spillers, and Benjamin went to work moving the things out of the basement into the U-Haul. It was a, supposed to be a seemingly short stopover, and then they would all get back on the road. And when they were done, and it was time to leave, something happened. This is the residence. You'll hear that um, when Jason and Benjamin were distracted, moving things out of the basement, Chloe Driver, at some point, went down to the kitchen got a knife out of the knife block, returned to the room with Hannah, locked the door behind her, and repeatedly stabbed Hannah to death with this knife. <coughs> she then took the knife and stabbed herself in the neck. This is where Hannah Driver bled to death. You will hear that Jason and Benjamin 
were out in the driveway. They were getting ready to go. Sarah and Jessica had come down. They were in the driveway getting ready to go. And Vinyama went upstairs to get Chloe and the baby. And the door was locked. And he heard noises. And he panicked. And he kicked the door down. And he found the scene of his 13-month-old daughter bleeding to death on the bed and <clears throat> Chloe on the ground with a knife wound to her neck as well. You'll see evidence of him kicking in the door. And you'll hear the witnesses who said they heard the most blood-curdling scream from him. What did you do? What did you do? You will see the body cam footage of the first responders on the scene who rushed in to try to save these, the baby and Chloe driver. And what you will see is Benyamin with his hands on Hannah's neck trying to keep her from bleeding to death. And Jason Spillers, the other man that's a part of this group, with his hands on Chloe's neck trying to save her life. You will see these men were in shock. They were desperately trying to help. And you will see the response of first responders, EMTs, and everybody who did everything they could for Hannah and Chloe. You will hear that Hannah died, that she had four stab wounds. One of them was a one and a half inch deep stab wound to her back. The other wounds were three stab wounds to the neck, one of which was so deep that it went all the way through her tiny neck transected her carotid artery and hit her vertebrae. You are going to hear a lot of evidence about Benyamin. And I don't particularly expect you to like him. I expect you are going to hear that they're not from Cherokee County. But what I want you to remember in this trial is that their belief system and practices are not on trial. We only have jurisdiction over crimes that happened in Cherokee County. And what the evidence will be is that the only crime that happened in Cherokee County was a crime that was committed by Chloe Driver. The evidence will show that the only act committed by Benyamin in Cherokee County was the desperate act to save his baby daughter. And you will see it. Now the state has the burden of proving that she murdered Hannah and that she intended Hannah's death. And that will be very, very clear from the evidence. The defense is raising the issue of insanity and going to ask you to find her not guilty by reason of insanity. And that is their burden to prove. There is a legal definition of what insanity is and opening statements are not necessarily the appropriate time for us to get into what the law is and how you apply the law. That will be something that comes at the end of this trial. But what opening statements are for is to give you a roadmap, to help you focus on the important issues and to help you know what to look for when the evidence is coming before you. And so in that regard, the things that I can appropriately tell you is you're going to hear a lot of things in this case about throwing witnesses and evidence, throwing around terms like crazy, mentally ill, insane. And you, as human beings that, that know the English language, probably use all of those terms kind of interchangeably. <coughs> but the truth is the law has definitions for things, and they are not the same. So what I would like for you to pay attention to um, in the presentation of evidence in this case is the evidence that she understood the wrongfulness of her actions, that she understood the difference between wrong and right. And there will be plenty of evidence presented to you that she did. One of those pieces of evidence is when she was sitting in the hospital bed, one of the first things that she wrote to law enforcement, because she could not speak because she had a trach, was, how long will my prison sentence be for killing her? This is the evidence that will come before you that demonstrates that she understood the wrongfulness of her actions. Pay attention.